So the team today is composed of uh, Rafael, Mare, and uh, Gregoire. And give you an introduction to the Cytomine software that we are developing for more than 10 years now. And actually, the history uh, of uh, Cytomine started uh, back in 2009 when we somehow had a dream about designing a web-based platform to ease collaborative um, uh, research in uh, biomedical fields. And uh, at that time, we, we thought that it would be amazing to have a web platform that would allow different stakeholders and uh, researchers with different backgrounds uh, to share imaging data, to share annotations, and to uh, work together on analyzing these images. So basically, we thought that it would be nice to have a common place where the, uh, for example, a biomedical researcher would have access to uh, sample cohorts or uh, biobanks to share their uh, samples with people who have uh, amazing uh, scanners or microscopes and together with uh, computer scientists to, to design new algorithms that will perform uh, different computer vision tasks um, through the web and eventually using uh, some uh, kind of um, EV uh, computing uh, environment like clusters. And we also had the idea that would be nice to allow external people, for example, um, remote uh, experts, remote pathologists, remote uh, biomedical researchers to annotate these images to help machine learning developers to uh, develop new algorithm to ease this computer vision task. And so uh, what we basically did is start this project when we got some local funding from uh, Wallonia in Belgium and we start this software development motivated by some application in lung cancer research where these people had to analyze uh, large numbers of histology slides. Uh, but we quickly realized that not only these researchers uh, have these kind of needs, uh, but many researchers in the biomedical research field, but also in education. And so we continuously develop this software with um, user requirements from uh, very uh, different uh, communities of uh, biomedical researchers. And then six years later, we decided to release this uh, software under a permissive uh, open source license together uh, with the publication of our first publication in bioinformatics. And since 2017, we um, are uh, proposing uh, two versions of this Cytomine software. The official version is maintained by Cytomine company. And so you have here the links to the website of the company, but also the links to the GitHub and documentation servers of this version. And basically, at uh, my uh, research institute, we are still developing this software by adding new experimental modules, new user interface, new data models, or new AI algorithms. And so basically, this version uh, includes the features of the official version plus these additional modules and you also have the, the um, uh, links uh, at the bottom of these slides. Um, since uh, we deployed this software uh, and we released it under the, the, the open source license, many, many different types of users um, have used it, either through collaboration with us or to, by asking the company to install this software in their own institute or in their own uh, companies. And so we have here examples of many different uh, in universities around the world who are using it on a regular basis, either in biomedical research um, settings or in education settings where teachers are uh, providing histology courses to uh, cytomine, uh, to medical or veterinary uh, uh, med medicine students. And since uh, the beginning of this year, we are also involved in a very big uh, European project with more than 40 partners, uh, where the aim is to develop a kind of NCBI for digital pathology with the idea to collect uh, millions of slides and uh, annotations and connect AI algorithm. And the idea is to use Cytomine as the core platform for web-based annotation of these uh, um, 
large database. So here we show um, very simple examples of uh, cytomine applications. So these different researcher uh, comes with different types of images. We, uh, as I said, started with histology uh, images, but uh, for 10 years now, we are also working with the very different kind of microscope images in the biomedical field, but also in other fields where large images have to be annotated in a collaborative way. Um, and so we have application in lung cancer, breast cancer research, uh, zebrafish development research, uh, in morphometric studies like cephalometry, um, or in the art domain or even other uh, domains. And if you are interested to know more about these applications, you can have a look at our website where we try to collect papers that have been published by people uh, using the software. So what is the main idea of Cytomind is to enable collaboration through the web. So that means that with, once you have installed a Cytomine, uh, the Cytomine software on a server in your institute, you can start uh, sharing uh, almost everything, including so the images, um, for example, the very large images that are produced by digital pathology scanners. But you can also share the annotations which are basically, uh, you can see this as region of interest in these images to which you associate some metadata like uh, ontology terms or properties or textual descriptions. We will uh, describe this today to you, but you can also uh, share algorithms and the uh, results like quantification that have been produced by these algorithms. So basically with Cytomind, each in entity like an, a project, an image, a user, uh, an annotation, uh, an algorithm, a result of an algorithm as a kind of unique identifiers that allows you to share this data uh, around the web. And so here what you see is a typical workflow uh, where you have images that you want you upload on a Cytomine server, then uh, these images are directly visible through the web interface using a regular um, web browser. Then multiple people can access these images and annotate them manually. Then this manual annotation can be used to train machine learning or deep learning uh, algorithm that can be executed through the web interface and produce um, some quantification like tumor deline delineations. And these um, Results produced by the algorithm can be proofread on the web interface, uh, like correcting the segmentation uh, contours, etc. So that at the end, the end, the biomedical experts can uh, generate some statistics that are useful for his uh, or her uh, specific analysis. This is a typical workflow. There are many different use cases of Cytomine. Uh, and please note also that Cytomine can be used as a desktop application because you can install it on your uh, laptop or desktop uh, Linux-based machine. But of course, then uh, you will lose collaborative features as it's not installed on a server that is accessible to, to your collaborators. So in this uh, uh, two-session uh, seminar, uh, we will first um, today discuss about the, 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 the main concept of cytomine, uh, like images, annotation, etc. And we will focus on the uh, interaction with cytomine through the web um, application using a regular uh, web browser. So that means we will show you how to visualize these images, annotate them, and at the end execute uh, the algorithm through the web interface. But uh, next week, we will uh, go more into the details on, on how to interact with a Cytomine server using its API and uh, using Python or Java clients that can interact with the server so that as a computer scientist or data, or data scientist, you can basically import and export all the data from a Cytomine server, uh, like export the annotation that uh, the, man, the experts have done manually into a, a Python uh, code that you have developed. Then 
train a deep learning model and then uh, apply it uh, on new images and communicate with the site domain server to, visu to visualize the result directly on the web interface. But so this second part will be um, presented next week and today. So we will uh, mostly focus on the web UI with the online organization of your imaging data set into projects. Uh, we will uh, briefly discuss about how to configure this project with access rights and user roles. We will show you on to, how to visualize these very large images. Gregoire will mostly uh, show you examples on digital pathology images, 2D images. But at the end, I will quickly show you uh, that we can also deal with uh, other type of uh, images, including um, 2D plus channel Z and, and time uh, images and in hyperspectral images. Gregor will also show you how to create and share these annotation or metadata and all the types of information that you can associate to uh, your annotations. We will show you how to configure and uh, um, the user interface, etc. So it's less or more complex with more or less uh, features. And at the end, we will briefly uh, show you some application of uh, AI or computer vision algorithm just to, to, to give you an overview of what we will present next week. So without further delay, I will uh, give the floor to Grégoire, which will uh, give you a, a live demo of uh, Cytomine. Okay. Hi, everybody. Do you hear me cloud, uh, loud and clear? Yes. Perfect. So welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for the Nubias Academy to have uh, invited us to uh, present you site of mine uh, in a so detailed manner. Uh, thanks, Rafael, for and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and colleagues for the introduction. Uh, so we will hear today um, well, oops. Present site of mine house is is uh, on the web application. So I will present you all the main concepts that are driving the site of mine uh, experience and give you some examples of uh, how to create some content. So for site of mine, everything starts on the uh, what we call the dashboard, where you can have some messages and list of the previous projects that you have open and some metrics. But the first of it, I will need to introduce what is a project. Inside Cytomine, every project means a space to work. So if I want to share some images with some colleagues to do some stuff, or even for me to work on them, I will need to create what we, what we call a project. A project is a space where I will be able to put my images and uh, do some work on them. To uh, open uh, this project, I will detail what is uh, precisely the project when I will create a new one for you to see. Uh, but for to put inside uh, some data inside the project, I will first need to upload some image in my storage. So the concept here inside mine is that uh, uh, any user will have his own image that belongs to him. So when I get connected inside site of mine, I have my account. There is absolutely nothing which is available inside site of mine without being authenticated. It's uh, 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 on restricted uh, on authentication application. Uh, on my uh, account, and I will change data after, I have some uh, data which are important, like my uh, email, which is quite public, so it's not problem to see it. Uh, the data I will change after this demonstration are the public key because it's keys that you will see uh, several times in this um, uh, webinars, on these two webinars, because the main force of site of mine is that I can go here on the web application using my login and password, but I can also make some requests through the API using my public and private key to get authenticated without having to give my login and password. So here on this page, I can manage my uh, different uh, data, including this one, and these keys can be re regenerated. So I will do it after. It's not a problem to let it in the video. 
Uh, so this is for the uh, main account. So in my storage, I will have only my own images, not the images that have been uploaded by my colleagues or friends, only mine. Uh, uh, so in the main bar uh, above here, you have uh, the main concept, which are the projects, the space where I put my image, my collection of image I can put inside my project. And the uh, collection of uh, terms that we call ontologies, I will present it after, and a collection of algorithms also, I will present it after. Let go uh, deep inside Cytomine, and firstly, by creating a project. So to create a project, I need to go on the project page, and the lo lo logic is every time, every time the same on the um, right top corner of a table, I have a button to create some data. So I will create a project here, which is not very uh, uh, creative name, Demo de Bias Academy. Uh, I will create an ontology using the project name to give some example uh, later. And I save and directly I have the um, configuration of my project, which is open. I will come back here in this configuration tool to, to present you all the different uh, possibilities that we have. But firstly, you will see that my project have a list of image, which is still empty, a list of annotations that I will uh, sort after and so on. So first of it, I will add an image. I already, uh, already have one image in my uh, storage. So you can see that the list of the image which are available to add to project is the same of the list of my storage. It's uh, the list of the project, the image that belongs to me. And you can see also now that uh, when you are leaving a project to do some stuff and check, for example, another tab, you can go on your workspace and directly go back to the project when uh, you were working before. So here I will add my uh, images by clicking on add. Then I will have some information regarding the magnification where the uh, image have been uh, scanned. And if I want to have more detailed information, I will click on this button here at the start of the line to open the box. And there you can see a lot of different information which might be useful for you, like a description, uh, a tag and properties that we will explain during this webinar, the slide preview that have been made by the scanner, the uh, vendor uh, of the trademark of the scanner, the side of the image and the resolution uh, which has been fetched in the metadata of the image to calibrate the image. So these are, are quite useful information. And I will uh, make some uh, uh, demonstration on how to uh, fulfill some more information. But firstly, we're going to uh, open this image. So you can see that using the web interface, I'm able to navigate in the image by uh, dragging, dropping with my mouse. And with the button plus and minus, I can zoom in or unzoom. Uh, so uh, this is a viewer that is uh, inside site of mine to allow you to go to see on the different image, a different structure. Uh, so you can see here in the legend box that as uh, soon as I go to zoom too much, the box gonna be red to inform me that I will go beyond the resolution, uh, the maximum resolution of the slide. I have seen in my image tab here that it has been uh, scanned at uh, 20 um, uh, time magnification. So it's quite logical. If I go more and for example, 40 times, it will be a uh, numeric zoom. You can also see that when I leave my image and I still in the same project, I click on it, I will uh, uh, go, uh, um, I'll be still be there in my uh, previous space location and with the right zoom I have to do. If I don't want to have the, uh, uh, this option to be able to zoom more than the maximum resolution, I just have to go here in the uh, zoom and uh, de-enable de the digital zoom. And then I will not be able to zoom too much uh, uh, to, to see my images. So there, this is the main uh, interface of the viewer of Cytomine. On the left, you have a, a, a column here with all the tabs which are uh, uh, specific of the project. So we will see after it the image annotation, activity information, and configuration if you are a manager of the project. On the top of the viewer here, you have all the annotation tools, and I will make some examples. And on the right here, 
you have all the tools that are available for this image. So I have an information box with an, with an height, resolution, magnification, and so on. The name of the image. I am the digital zoom to enable or disable. I have a box to manipulate some colors and to change some colors in life with saturation, you and so on on the image based on what you need for you to see the different structure or uh, etc. So uh, you can reset it after it, uh, for of course. Uh, you have the uh, concept of annotation layers, which is really important inside of mine. The spirit inside of mine is that to uh, enhance collaboration between user, each user inside a project will have what we call an annotation layer. It's like a transparent layer that you have just for you where you can draw your annotations. For example, here, all my annotations will be drawn on my uh, own layer. In my project, I'm still alone, so I cannot see the annotation layer of other uh, user. I will show it after how to add some more users. And we can also see the properties. I will show you uh, later and so on. So this is very important to, rem to remember that on the left, it's a project specific um, um, tabs. And on the right, it's image specific. So uh, this being explained, I will show you now some uh, uh, the, the different possibilities that we have for annotation inside site of mine. So the first one is the points. So here I can select all the different annotation tools. Uh, so the first one is the point. The point is classically to spot uh, a structure. For example, is I want this cell and this cell and this cell. So you can see that as soon as the tool is selected, I can continue to annotate. And uh, then I have some points which are on the uh, uh, screen. Uh, the points, it's just a location uh, given by an X and a Y. So it has absolutely no metrics. So in the current selection box, which give all the information of this annotation, you will see nothing uh, 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 regarding the metrics. If I draw a line, I will try uh, here, for example, uh, to uh, make, for example, the distance between this, I click and I re-click here two times to close the line. The line is uh, an annotation system which have a lens. So it have a matrix. So there I have a lens which has been uh, uh, indicated on my current selection box and, and so on. So uh, all the different annotations will have some metrics regarding to, the na to their nature. So I can draw a single line, but I can also draw a broken line by continue to clicking with symbol click. And I just indicate the end of my uh, annotation with a, with a double click. So when I make the double click, it means the end of the line. And I have here the length of the, all the segments together. So the principle is every time the same, I can close this box. And if I go and select a new annotation, it will uh, rip up and give me all the uh, metrics and informations I have regarding these annotations. Regarding of the line, you, we have the straight line. We have uh, also the free end one, uh, which can be quite the same, but in free end. So I will give an example here, which is uh, not very creative, but uh, just for you two to see. And there we also have the lens only. We have also now a collection of what we call the closed annotations and that will be rectangle, circle, polygon, and free and polygons for you to uh, enrich your data. The first one is a rectangle. So I will move uh, a little bit in these images. So the rectangle is just to uh, click on one corner and double click on the other. And you have a rectangle which is uh, uh, created here. And then we have a perimeter and an area. And the data are uh, calculated for sure based on the uh, um, resolution of your images. So this uh, is for the rectangle. Uh, and for the circle, you just click on the start and it's start of the circle. And, and when you click up for the end, you have your circle, which is, has been created. And so on for the polygon, it's the same principle that the line. You just click and as soon as you're going to click, it's going to make some nodes. And at the end, you closed and you have your uh, polygon, which is, has been drawn. And for the uh, free and one, you let your mouse uh, uh, down and you, uh, until you don't uh, free your fingers, 
it will continue to draw. So you have all the different type of annotations that can be made inside Cytomine. And you will, be, you will certainly agree with me that if I look at the screen, all the closed uh, annotation are more visible than the uh, uh, open one, just because uh, there is a fill in the middle. So if you want to see them without this fill, you can uh, play with what, what we call the layer opacity. So you can change it here on your layers or, or, or maybe on all the layers which have been uh, charged. So you can change this opacity here in the uh, annotation layer uh, box. Uh, another point also which is important is for the dots. They are not very well uh, visible uh, in uh, big resolution, but as you may see, if I unzoom, they will be quite uh, more easily visible because they stay at the same size independently of the uh, zoom uh, I have. Uh, it's a feature that is necessary to be sure to find them uh, when you are uh, uh, creating a point at the very uh, maximum resolution. It's more easy to find them. So here I have one I can, I, I can select. So this is for the creation of all annotation. If you have made some uh, mistake during the uh, step of creating the annotation, for example, this a drawing here or this rectangle must be moved. You can select first the annotation and select, then select the move option. And then we will be able to drag and drop it to uh, place it an, uh, at an, uh, another place in the screen and so on for all the other annotation if you want to redo it. If it's not a question of moving, but a question of rotation, for example, with this one, you can use the rotate tool and you can you will be able to rotate this annotation on the center of the uh, the, the annotation. Uh, if you uh, want to have uh, this uh, annotation on the center of your screen, you just have to click here, center view on this annotation, and it will be uh, perfectly placed in this uh, area. If you want it to be uh, um, changed you have the opportunity to add some notes or to delete some notes uh, using a, a, a tool here. Uh, you can also use uh, uh, the, the modify here. So when you click on the modify, you will, be, uh, you will be able to see all, sorry, I will center the view. You will be able to see all the nodes and are able to move them to make some correction on the shape of your annotation. Here is for the uh, polygons that I've made. If it's on the circle, I will center it also. You will see that uh, a, a, an annotation like a circle has been transformed in a series of nodes. So after it has been created, it can be uh, um, update in terms of shaping and it will be considered as a free end uh, annotation and can be edited in quite any manner that you want. You also might want to complete uh, uh, area uh, with uh, some situation where, where uh, moving some nodes it's not sufficient. So you will have to create uh, a heading uh, freehand area, for example. So here, when I click on the uh, draw and um, the pen with a plus, I will draw some uh, uh, annotation which are on the superposition of the uh, paste later one, and there will be a fusion of the both. Uh, uh, I can see uh, I can do it once again here. And I will have my, uh, sorry, I must firstly select it uh, here. If it's not, I will create an annotation instead. So here I have made uh, now an annotation which have been made of two region. Uh, so to make you see it, I will move them uh, independently. So if I want to uh, uh, add uh, uh, an area on this one, I will have to make like this and select it before. And the same for uh, subtracting uh, some uh, regions. And we have some time and mainly uh, I will create it here, for example. No, it's uh, one, uh, up, 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 up. selected. Uh, if I do that, maybe I will be able to uh, make a, a hole in my annotation. Yes, which is quite some common when you are running some AI scripts, which are make some uh, segmentation, for example. And that's why, that's why we have the option of filling uh, all the all. So I have selected the annotation and I just feel to be sure that all the uh, alls in the annotations are not considered anymore. 
so that's it for all the different tools that allows you to create a, an update and maybe delete uh, the annotation that you have uh, using this one. Uh, in your friend, uh, obviously, you have to confirm uh, before. Uh, so now I wanted to uh, add a new uh, images because I've made some annotation here. Uh, and firstly, I want to have a, to, to, to add a, a new image to make some other annotation on it. So I will show you how to add a new image. So here I only have a SVS1 a CM1. I will uh, just have to click on add file. I will choose for the demonstration, obviously, a very lightweight uh, image to not having an upload, which is too long. Uh, but that might on some point, no, well, uh, just here, uh, you can uh, add some uh, uh, several images and start upload for the both images at the same time or just one uh, before the other. If you just are clicking like that, the images is uploaded and then you will have it uh, testing in terms of format and, and so on. And you will have it, uh, which is will be uh, added there uh, in your storage. And as soon as here, I can go back to my Demo Nubias Academy project and click on add image and have this one, which is added uh, with the other one. I can also, if I want to do it with a list of image and I know which project I want to use, I, will, uh, 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 I can also pre-select my project here and the next images will be uploaded and directly add to my project. So this one will take uh, more uh, time to do. So we will uh, check after if uh, it's uh, fulfilled and where does it, uh, the, the upload is finished, we will have it in our projects uh, after. So during here, uh, uh, I have my new images with this uh, in own information and so on, and I am able to open it. Uh, if you have some images like that, that you want to open uh, uh, together, because now I have two images, uh, I can open one and, for example, ask to go to the next images or the previous images. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay, but may, you, you might want to have both images open together. You just have to click here on the big plus on, on, on the bottom of the um, viewer. And then you will have the both uh, all the image you have on your uh, project, and you will be able to uh, see both on uh, both images on two independent viewers at the same time. Uh, if you have, uh, for example, normally this images is a crop of a section which is here, for example, perfect. So I will have two. Uh, portion which has quite identical, and I will might uh, you have an, another one uh, box that have pop up what, which was not there before when there is there, there was only one images is the chain here, which allows me to link the both images. And now, if I navigate in one and zoom in one, I will be also navigated and zoom in the other one. And you can did you, you can do it with uh, quite as many images as you want. The problem is not the numbers of images you are working on, it's more the size of your screen to be able to have some readable uh, viewers open. If you don't have some place enough here, by clicking on this, on this small bar, you can reduce the bar of the project to gain some more space. So now I have there these two images that can be uh, used in a synchronized way, even that they don't have the same size. As I explained, the small one was a crop of the big one. And when you don't want to uh, um, have this link uh, anymore, you can uh, unlink them. And when you don't want to work to with the two image at the same time, you can short it. But if you first want to go to see your upload, it's now you can see that in my workspace, I have my Nebias pro project still proposed, but in my viewer, I have two different viewers, a viewer group with two images and the past one, where I only my, have my a single images that I have. So I can change here my active viewers to go back to several viewers that remains open as soon as I work inside Cytomai. If I really don't want them to be open at the same time anymore, I can close one of them by clicking on the red cross at the top of the left bar of the viewer. And then I will have two, in, two independent uh, viewers and I can close them uh, directly from this small um, box 
which is uh, moving here. So now I have uh, my images, which are which is still uploading there. Uh, I will come back here and I will show you if I de-zoom and go back to my annotations. Uh, I will come back here to uh, um, give some example on how we can add data to these annotations. Firstly, we can add a description, which is quite common. I want to write a text here to say uh, what is uh, uh, inside this uh, annotation to remind uh, for uh, as, as a reminder for me if I worked alone uh, why I did this annotation and what does is um, it means and so on. So I just have to uh, to uh, write some uh, explanation here. I this this annotation during the the bias webinar as an example. Uh, for example, and then I will have this text annotated here. Uh, just for you uh, to know that the text can be enriched with uh, all uh, its necessary bolt and, and so on and, and special characters and you can have access to the code of the text and so on. You can add some links, images and videos so you can enrich your comments, but also you can uh, make some uh, piece of text because now if I uh, copy paste this text several times, uh, you will agree on me that if I created a too long text, it might be uh, difficult to read on the small current selection. So we crop the text as uh, after several moments of characters. And I want, I, I, I can uh, decide where I can cut this text before. So if I put the stop preview here and I save, I will only have the first sentence and when I see the full text, I will have the uh, uh, whole content. So as soon as the text is too long for the box, you will have a C full text box uh, to open it in a more readable format. And if it's a very long text, you will have a way to uh, swipe in inside uh, this uh, box. And even if you want to put it in a more bigger size to be able to read if it's a really long text or my, maybe with images and video and so on. So using this text, a description tool, you can add a description to your annotation, but it's also the same if you want to add some description on your images. And it's also the same if you want to add to some uh, description on your project. So inside of mine, we, we will try to uh, use the exact same tools for the same function regarding the different objects. So the description uh, can be done also on the project on an image inside the project or on an annotation inside these images. Uh, this is for the uh, description. The other uh, tools which, which uh, might be useful is a tag. So the tag is a, a, a just a common keyword that will be publicly uh, available for all users inside the platform and that it's useful to find uh, some um, content when you uh, are wanted to group some project or images uh, uh, inside uh, a site of mine. For example, I can uh, uh, go here and say that my uh, project in my information, I will open this box for you to see. And just to say that uh, I have here the tags I will create, which is the bias and then add. So I have now a tag, which is the bias that can, I, I, I can use uh, for uh, example, to tag uh, also um, images that I have here and so on. And as soon as these tags are available, they are available for you to uh, retrieve some um, uh, information. Here in the form, I just have a, a sort on the name of the uh, object with project and image. So you can see that if I read, uh, write Nebias, I will only have my project, but if I click on plus, I can have also a selection of the tags. And then I have my, my project and my images that have been founded by the advanced search form, which is available on the top bar every time. So you can retrieve, retrieve your uh, uh, project and images on the, uh, using this. 
uh, by having access to the tags that you have created or the tags that other users have created on the content you uh, on the content you have access to. So this is why uh, for what the tags are for. Uh, so the same is for the annotation. I will be able. Sorry, it's here to use the no, no, no bias tag, for example. But by doing this, it will not be uh, on the main uh, web search uh, system. It will only available on the uh, annotation uh, tabs on the project. And I will explain after how to use it. Another system that we have, it's what we call a property. A property, it's also a keyword but which is more uh, based on the key value system because you might want to have a system to uh, give some values to objects that share the same key. Uh, when, when I use a tag, it's just a word, but here I have a, a, a dual system when I can play on the key and on the value to share information that are sharing the same, uh, inside the same group and so on, for example. I will give it a quite, Simple uh, example, if you want, for example, your users to uh, explore your annotation in a different uh, uh, order, I will create the key n and the value one for this uh, annotation, for example. And for this one, I will create with the same key. So it's n2 and I create the value, value two. And for example, the third one here, I will create the same key once again, so n and then the value three. So they all have properties which share the same key, but not the same value. And now I can go here on this uh, uh, button here to open the property box. And I can ask it to show all the uh, properties that share the key N. And you will see that you will have your uh, annotation here, which are labeled one, two, three. It might be letters, it might be sentences. It's a uh, an open uh, text field. So you can see that with this small example based on annotation, you can have some uh, structure which has grouped with the same uh, uh, um, uh, key. And we use property uh, mainly to add some um, uh, uh, metadata, what, what, so, so, so some information that can might be considered as metadata to annotation project and images and which are able also needed for so for you after to uh, be usable when you are doing some scripting for example so uh, on the viewer for the image you can see the properties but for, uh, it's quite obvious that it's not possible here uh, on the image with the property or of the image and for the project but the uh, feature exists also here so you can add also a system of, uh, of property to group your project or to group your images and you will be able to access this information with your scripts afterward. If I go back to my annotation, I have presented to you the description. I have presented to you uh, the tags and the properties. And we have a third system of keywords, which are the terms. The terms are uh, 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 the third system of keywords, which is part of the ontologies. So for now, I do not have any terms in my uh, uh, collection here. So I, I can, to edit uh, uh, um, an ontology, I can edit it directly where I want to add a term, but I also uh, be uh, wanted to um, be able to edit it in these tools, which, uh, which is quite uh, general, general to add a term. And as you can see, you can add a term and associate it a color. Uh, I will not be very uh, creative today. I will just create the team term A with one color and um, term B with another one. And I let the system choose eventually a, a red one for oof, too dark. So let's see this one, for example, to have a red and green. And so I can go back to my image. And now we will be able to uh, classify all the annotations using the properties, uh, uh, using for example, uh, excuse me, the uh, ontologies and the terms of ontology. So for example, here in this one, now I have a selection of term A and this one, I can choose term B for example, and you directly see the consequences vi visually is that an the annotations 
the filling of the annotations uh, gets the color of the classifications in terms of terms. So I can select my terms one by one with this one. But if I knew, if I know that I will create some uh, a, 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 a collection of some annotations that share the same uh, terms, I can pre-select, for example, the term A. And as soon as this term A is selected here, every kind of annotation I will create it will be pre-associated uh, with the term A, as you can see. If I want to change it, I will switch it to term B, and I will create it now some other annotations that will belongs to B, for example. And these are all uh, the manner that we can associate them some classifications to annotation. And this classification using the ontology will be very useful when you will uh, do some scripting and AI uh, algorithms. And uh, Raphael will go really deeper in the uh, advantages and the use of these ontologies on his own part on the uh, today and on the second webinar. So I will not uh, uh, deep too much inside, but just to uh, show you that here, the, we have also this box which is available now. You can uh, sort all the annotations you have on screen regarding to the terms that they are associated to by uh, just uh, select all the box here. So you can hide or see the terms A related annotation, hide or see the term B or hide or see all the annotations which are associated with no terms. And if the colors is too intense and give you a false opinion on the structure behind, you can change specifically the opacity of these uh, 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 specific annotations. I will uh, have here a, a, a green and red one for you to more to better be able to see that uh, uh, it's only applied to one terms and not the other. Don't forget that you can also reset opacities here. You can also have the main global opacity of your uh, uh, layer on the layer application here. So here are uh, all the tools to uh, put some uh, information related to your, uh, uh, for example, images and annotation here. So if I recap, I have a description, which is a free text. I have a tag with if, which is a common keyword it, which is more there to retrieve your content when you get connected once again. You have the properties which are uh, able to add some values on the same key on different structure. And you have the ontologies terms which are able to classify objects that you have here. Is, this is using uh, the uh, annotations. If you go now to the images, you will see that you have the text, you have the properties, but you don't have the uh, uh, ontologies. Ontologies are really restricted to the annotations. So it's really um, uh, made to, to drive your uh, classification of annotations when it's useful for your algorithms. Uh, and so on for the, uh, the, the project, you have the description, you have the tags, you have the properties, but you don't have uh, the, the way to select uh, uh, the terms, but there, uh, it informs you that this project is linked to the Demo Nebias Academy ontology. Just because when I've, I've created my project, I asked him to create an ontology with the same name. And just for me to inform you that each project uh, can be linked to only one ontology, not a collection of one, because it will be too complex in terms of terms to use. And mostly if you have the same terms in two different ontologies, but one ontology can be used in as many projects as you want. So it's a one-to-end relationship. And if you, have, if you want to change it, now we can go on the configuration of, of your projects. And it's quite uh, useful for you to see what is possible to uh, do uh, here. First of it, I will add some uh, uh, colleagues because I'm quite alone here. So I will add some members and I will uh, select Raphael here and uh, Renault here up to be uh, my colleague and just uh, add them uh, on the list. And you can see that the role, it's not the same. So it's time for now to speak about the roles of users inside Cytomine. Inside the main global platform, you have three different roles. As you can see on my account, 
I am a user. So the, the user is the standard user inside Cytomine, is the user that can create project and add images. If I want to resume his role to this, uh, so it can create project, add image, and invite some other users and so on. This is the role of the user. We have a lower role, which is a guest. The guest is the users which are not uh, 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 able to create projects nor upload images. So they will have a project tab for, to see the project where they are invited to work, but they will not have any storage because they are not allowed to upload images. And we have an upper role, which is admin, which is able to make the administration part of the uh, platform, which is my case. So I, I am an admin, but to be uh, uh, in, uh, to have access to all the administration tools, I must open an admin session. So if I open my admin session, I will have here the admin uh, tab, which uh, 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 give me access to more uh, admin stuff that we will not uh, focus too much time on it for now. So I close it. So on the platform, I have uh, three different roles, which are users, guests, and admins. But inside a project, all these users can receive some roles which are specific to this project. And there I can be a manager or a contributor. So the manager is with the, uh, some black icon here, is the one which have uh, uh, created the project or been invited to manage the project. So it can add images, it can uh, uh, invite some other users, it can change, uh, uh, you have access to the configuration box of the project and share all the different uh, features that we will list and so on. And for example, if I want to uh, uh, make Raphael uh, a manager of this project, I just have to click on his role and he will be updated directly. The representative is uh, only a flag to say that it's this uh, manager which is the most uh, uh, able in the team to answer questions regarding this project. So it's just a way to spot on, on one, peep, uh, one person to say, if you have some question, please uh, ask him before uh, uh, ask to the other one. Uh, in terms of uh, general settings of the project, now I have some contributor uh, where I might have a different uh, settings I want to give on the projects and liberties and a way to work regarding to the status of the project. Uh, here, if I go in this images, I can uh, now have access to the layer of my colleagues, Renault and Raphael, and see if they had made some annotation and they don't for the moment. But if I want uh, 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 work with them, if I let my project like this, it is in editing mode classic. It means that every contributors will be able to add, edit or delete the project data on their own layer and on layers of other colleagues. So if I go here, I can open my images and decide, for example, to go on the Raphael uh, uh, annotation layer. So I will add mine. I will say, no, I will not write anymore on mine. I will write on Raphael one and I will create an annotation. Oh, sorry, why does it? An annotation here, which is uh, on the uh, layer of uh, Raphael only. I will deselect here. So it has been uh, created on the Raphael uh, uh, layer. If I hide it, I have mine and I have his one. So I can, uh, in the full collaborative mode, I can edit or even delete information on the layers of the other users. If I go in restricted mode, because I don't want my colleagues to be able to change the content of the layers of the other colleagues, I say that the contributors will not be able to add, edit, or delete project data, except annotations, properties, and descriptions, and on their own layer only. So using this mode, all the contributors will be able to write data and so on on their own layers, as they can see the data on the layers of the colleagues, but not edit them. And if I want to them to be in a read-only, the just, just for your eyes only, even the contributors and even on their own layers, they will never be able to add, edit, or delete uh, data. But 
this belongs only to contributors. The project managers, and it's uh, written here, would still able to see, add, edit, or DD data on any layers in this project. So it's really important to know who you will trust enough to give the role of a, um, a project manager and who you, who you will let to be project contributor. So we have a lot of usages in um, uses in, the, in cytomine. Uh, it, uh, cytomine is used in teaching, in research, in diagnostics, second opinion, and so on. So for example, in a teaching, we generally have the teachers, which are managers, and the students, which are contributors. In researchers, it can be the lead of the project, which is managers, and in, invite some uh, colleagues just to add some data uh, in a blind mode, so he doesn't want them to uh, see the layers of the other and so on. So he let them in the role of contributors. And the same for second opinion, we have the pathologist, which uh, the case belongs to, which will stay the manager, and the other pathologists, which are invited to give their, uh, their own opinion, will let in the contributor role, for example. And uh, this is for the editing mode. It is really important to set it correctly to the use that you want your colleagues to be able to work. We have a more uh, complex way to uh, transform the project what, in what we call the blind mode. Uh, uh, using the blind mode now, uh, when I go to my list of image, you can see that the name of the image has been replaced by a blind and an ID. So I am a manager, so I still uh, am able to see the uh, real name of the images, but if I would have been a contributor, I will only see the ID, uh, this ID for the image. So if it's, this is important when you want some colleagues to uh, see some images without any information or on the coloration, the tissue and so on, which are information that can be uh, put on the name of the file. Uh, this is in, uh, sometimes useful in education, for example, or on a blind, uh, a dual blind system for second advice in research and diagnostic. Uh, so this is for the blind mode. We can also decide that we're going to add the manager layers to all the contributors. So for example, the students will not be able to see the slide, the layer of the teacher. Uh, or, or you want just the, the invert, you will add contributors layers. You don't want a student to be able to get connected inside Cytomine and see the, the, the layers of the other students, but you, you can see the layer of the teacher. So with these two box and a selection of uh, annotation layers, which are available to contributor, you can also add some complexity and in, uh, in, uh, um, in the way of uh, the, the people are allowed to work inside Cytomine. This is for adding layers based on the role of contributors or managers. But you, may, you might also want that as soon as someone gets uh, open the images, he see directly the information on uh, one of the layers. So here I can deselect the layers, for example, and um, I might want to have the, the, the layers of Raphael, which is automatically selected when any kind of user is opening the images. So now normally I should open uh, no, that's always like that. Uh, I will I should open the, these images, and I will see uh, my layer and the one of Raphael. So my mind should normally uh, always selected, but the one of Raphael has been added to uh, the selection because I have asked it to be uh, selected in the default layers, and I can make a, a multi-select. A collection of layers. This will be the, the layers which will be by default opened uh, in addition of mine. Uh, I can also say that the default property that I have selected before to uh, let the labels of the properties, the values of the properties being uh, seenable. Uh, here I have to uh, select it uh, manually, but I might want also it to be uh, directly selected when I uh, go uh, here. Uh, and then uh, if I uh, open my, uh, no, I, I don't have uh, an image uh, annotation here. Uh, why it doesn't work like always that in demo. <laughs> uh, 
there. It has been uh, automatically uh, selected. And uh, once again, another uh, stuff here. Do, do you uh, uh, allow your contributors to download the images? Because you, as a manager, you can, uh, when you open an image, sorry, no, when you open the box of an image, you have access to the download tool here to download the image on your own disk. This feature uh, must be uh, authorized for the uh, contributors. So the contributors will not have this uh, button. And uh, the last button of the configuration is to rename your project or to change the ontology it is associated to. So I will deselect here. So in terms of access to the content, you can change the editing mode uh, in read only. So just for your eyes only to restrict it, you can edit your own data or to classic one, you can edit uh, any data of anyone uh, on the slide on the, on the layers which are available, available by the fact that you have decided or not to hide the contributors on the manager layers. And you can blind the information to hide all the sensible information if you want your users to work in the blind uh, situation. This is for the access to the data. You might also want that your contributors do not have access to all the tool, nor all the boxes, nor all the tabs here or the page inside this project. So this is can, can be configured using the custom UI. So for example, here as a manager, I have access to the image here on the, on, on the left, the annotation I see, not the analysis. So I might add analysis by clicking on uh, to, to it to be green, activity and so on. So now I have the, uh, uh, the fact that the, the, as a manager, I have access to all the uh, uh, available pages here, but not my contributors. So the contributors, uh, will have a, a selection like this one. So they will have access to the image annotations and information, not the analysis nor the activity. And you can do it for any kind of box inside the viewer of Cytomine. So for example, if you do not want uh, your uh, uh, users to use the review, nor the broadcast, nor the properties, ontologies, annotation layers, and so on, nor link image, or you can let it, uh, so you can hide all these boxes and they will have a, a, a lighter, uh, um, what I will say, a lighter uh, interface uh, viewer here with all these buttons which are not there. I will uh, show you uh, by doing the same for the managers. So now if I go here, I, I have my uh, uh, viewer which I do not have charge the selected uh, uh, boxes here. So I only have these uh, specific boxes uh, available. Uh, and so on. I can do it for all the boxes, but I can so also do it for all the information inside the annotation details. So the box that can be uh, open when I have an, uh, uh, oh, I don't have a layers anymore, which is, doesn't simplify my work in examples here there. Uh, so I have my uh, uh, annotation box. So here you can uh, also decide which information your users, uh, contributors will have access to. For example, I can decide that uh, the descriptions uh, doesn't uh, have any sense here, nor the terms, uh, nor the attached files, nor the properties. So now I will go back and I hope it will be uh, correct and my current selection has been adapted and so on. So with the custom UI, you can really manage uh, on all the uh, information that you give access to. And it's also uh, in, uh, have an effect on the uh, uh, draw tools. So as manager, for example, uh, if I want my contributors to uh, make some annotations only in a free end, I will disable all the other uh, annotation tools and I will check here for for the moment to have it and then I just have the free and polygons no more points nor uh, 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 lines and so on are available here I have selected the same for the manager because I am connected as a manager and I doesn't want to uh, every time change uh, my accounts just for you to show the different features there so you can see that all the viewers uh, uh, objects which are on the project tab list on the 
uh, viewers write tab list and or the annotation box and the annotation tools can be let uh, accessible or not regarding on the configuration on the project. And uh, I just uh, pay uh, attention now that didn't show you that if your slide is not on the correct angle, you can make some rotations, which are pre-steps or reset it or, uh, and so on. This for the uh, viewer. Uh, the main other page here is for the annotations. So an uh, the annotations is a collection of all the annotations that have been done by all the users in your project. So it's uh, sorted by terms by default. So if you don't use any terms, you will have only the section no terms. But as soon as you get, uh, you use some terms as Cytomine has been by default uh, developed for uh, manage AI inside digital pathology, it's based on terms. So you have a pre-selection on terms, but you also are able to uh, filter, filter this annotation collection based on the size on the display, uh, 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 sorry, uh, here. So you can uh, ask the uh, size of the annotation to be large or small. Uh, you can uh, decide how many annotation by page and so on. And the, out, the color of the outline because we outline all the annotation borders and uh, uh, regarding to the coloration or the tissue that you have, you might want to change the uh, preview of the borders of the annotations. In the filters now, you can sort the uh, manual annotations that have been made by humans. And because we sort uh, uh, manual regarding to the analysis annotations and the reviewed one. I will not spend some time on the review process because it's on the Raphael's part, but just for, for me to mention here that manual annotation as made by humans, analysis annotations are made by uh, uh, automatic process like uh, algorithms and reviewed annotations are annotations that have been fetched from the Bose collection and have been validated by a human afterwards. So to, to, to make a, a, a validated data set, it's more uh, on the reviewed annotation. For the moment, I just have, just have created some manual annotations, but I'm sure that Raphael is its own part will uh, focus on the analysis and the reviewed one. I can select also uh, annotations of uh, only one images uh, and not on the all images on the project. Uh, I can select regarding to the terms. I can select regarding to who have done the annotation uh, for the manual annotation, of course. I can select also uh, for the uh, uh, tags that have been used here and from a selection of dates where the annotation have been created. So using all these uh, filters, you can sort your annotation and at the end, you can download the PDF or CSV or access files with all the uh, informations related to, the, to these annotations, like, uh, uh, let's see for the uh, PDF, for example, here, you have a tab with all the information, the ID of the annotation, the area, the parameters, the coordinate of the centers, the image ID, the image file name, the users, and so, and so on. So this tab, you can have it in PDF, you can have it in CSV, and you can have it in Excel if necessary. This is for the uh, uh, tab of annotations. Uh, for the analysis tab, it's a question of the run. I will let Raphael present it. Just for you to know that in algorithms, there is a collection of algorithms that are available if you have uh, uh, activated them in your admin panel as Raphael will show you. And if you have also activated them in your project. So all the uh, list of the uh, available algorithms are there and they are disabled here. So I did not uh, pay, uh, uh, spend time on this, but if uh, in, in the part of Raphael, it will show you how to enable a, a, an algorithm inside your project and how to launch it using this one. I will uh, uh, spend more time on the on activity, uh, which is all the activities that have been done by uh, members or uh, uh, and so on inside the project. So I have, uh, have an activity in terms of project connection, image consultation, annotation selections, mostly uh, which I've summarized here with uh, uh, numbers, but also in terms of uh, numbers of annotations regarding the fact they are manual analysis or reviewed and so on uh, regarding to the term, which term is the most used in the project and so on. So you have a lot of activity 
charts that you can see here, but you can also have a member's activity. For example, if I take my details, you will see that uh, all the different stuff I've done today uh, in terms of uh, what I have opened uh, images, how many times I have opened them, uh, what is my browser I have used uh, for me to understand. So if you are a manager and you have a contributor, which uh, uh, testimony that you have some problems, you can see uh, on uh, which uh, system it works to may uh, advise him uh, to change browser, for example, and so on. And these are also my own uh, chart activity and the list of images I've made and how many times I've opened them and so on. So this is uh, available for uh, the tab here uh, if you have allowed your users to see it. For example, you might want your uh, manager to see the activity, but not the contributor, uh, mainly in, uh, if the uh, information is sensible. Uh, and you uh, are also, as a manager, you're also able to see it in the view activity here for each user. So I will check if, uh, no, this is mine. Uh, I will check if uh, Raphael uh, has uh, made some stuff here. It just, uh, ah, it's uh, here, I've uh, opened an image and so on. So uh, this is for the activity and the informations on the uh, project. So for the other part, I guess I will let Raphael to explain more what is on uh, the algorithms and the administrative part of SiteMine. Uh, does the team can inform me if my time is spent? I guess yes. And if yes, I can uh, give you back the mic. Yes, I think we, we have still 20 minutes left. So I will... Um, you take the lead? Yeah, I think so. Thank you, Gregoire, very much. I dropped the mic. <laughs> News. Yeah, okay. I'm sharing my screen now. So what we have seen is uh, Cytomine as a complex uh, database system, I would say, but it's more than that. It's also possible with Cytomine indeed to apply algorithm, but just before going into that, I would like to quickly show you uh, some other features of uh, Cytomine, uh, also because we had some question about it. So first uh, to tell you that Cytomine can be used to visualize other types of images, of course, uh, than uh, histology images. And so if I go um, to um, uh, Cytomine server here, I'm opening a, a project and I will show you that we can, for example, uh, look at hyperspectral images. So in this case, um, you have uh, here hyperspectral images. Um, so these are very big uh, images. Uh, it's not only one uh, slice, uh, but you have uh, about 30 slices. And you have so these sliders here that correspond to the different channels that are in fact uh, different um, spectral band of the image. And so that's the same uh, thing that we can go, uh, also do for um, uh, Z-Stacks or uh, time points, etc. So with Cytomine, you can also uh, visualize this type of images. And when you go here, depending on the type of images, so Grégoire showed you that when you have histology images, you can adjust brightness, contrast, etc. But with this kind of images, you have uh, other types of operation that you can uh, apply on, on your images, slice by slice, etc. And so that means that we can also have some studies where, where you can combine different image types within the same viewer so that you can uh, have a look at your samples uh, acquired using different microscope or scanners and uh, compares uh, the information coming from these different instruments. Um, what is useful also uh, with this is that you can um, um, have a look at uh, hyperspectral images. So this was the case here, I even the hyperspectral images, as I said, but you can have a look at the spectral profile 
of your image. So for example, if I uh, click here, I create a point. I can have access to the uh, spectral information of this specific pixel over the, the different channels. Uh, so you have the, the plot here of the spectral intensities over the different bands. Um, what is also interesting is that uh, you can create what we call image groups or um, and also links between annotations. So this is a very new feature that we use when we have to analyze uh, multimodal data, for example, uh, in uh, histology uh, studies where you have different uh, staining uh, protocols to, 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 to stain your uh, images. And so if I go to this project here, so as uh, Gregoire showed you, you have the list of image in the project, but with this new feature, you can create image groups that is basically you link the different images that correspond to the same sample, the same patient. And you can open all the images uh, associated to this, uh, to this sample at the same time, or what you can do is to um, create what we, we call uh, annotation groups. So with this here, you have, in the case of image group, you have um, here a group of, of, of annotation that are linked that correspond to the same area in the sample, but in the different images. And so I open this one, but here you see okay, you can have a link uh, uh, by simply clicking here, you go to the next. Uh, corresponding annotation in the, the next image. And again, you can click here and see all these annotation at once. So that helps you to, to, to compare the information coming from the different modalities. So now it's time to uh, very briefly present you uh, the, the feature of uh, application of algorithm. So we will uh, more uh, go more into details next week about this. But just to show you that with Cytomine, we, you can apply different algorithm. And next week, we will show you that you can integrate your own algorithm and apply them on your uh, images. And so let me show you a simple example here with uh, this project where you have only uh, two images. But what we did uh, before this uh, demo is to annotate some uh, region of interest corresponding to, to tumors and non-tumors. So here, it means that we have associated, you have drawn the annotation as um, Gregoire explained using uh, the drawing tools here and associating them some terms. So here in red, you see the annotation um, corresponding to, to um, tumors. And in green, you see annotation corresponding to non-tumor regions. And in this application, the goal is to have a model that will automatically detect the tumor region. And then you can quantify, for example, the ratio between uh, the sample size and the tumor size to study the onset of lung tumors uh, in your samples. And so to do this, we have this analysis tab that allows you to execute some algorithm. So for the sake of time, I will not execute such an algorithm. I will not train a model. Uh, and I will uh, just quickly show you um, uh, the result of an application of a model. Um, but basically, the idea is that your training algorithm will use the annotation that have done that they've been done manually by the expert to train a recognition model. And then uh, you can um, visualize and apply the, this model on new images and visualize the, the results. So here I selected one of these execution that was done uh, a few months ago. So you can here you see that we are visualizing the annotation created by this specific execution of this algorithm. So if I go back here, you see the list here, but it was this run of an algorithm. You can have information about the exact parameters values that have been used by this algorithm. And so you can see 
the annotation that has, that it has produced. And if I click here, it show the annotation within the image. So this is the demo effect I should see. Uh, yeah, here it is the image. And you have the layer here corresponding not to the human, but to the algorithm um, layer. Um, and what you can do with Cytomine is proofread these um, detections. So we will show you a bit more next week, but basically you start reviewing the image and either you accept all these annotations like this, and then you will see that the contours of these annotation will will switch into uh, green contours. That means that they have been validated. But if you are not happy with some of the detection here, you can edit these like uh, Gregoire showed you. And when you are happy, of course, for the sake of time, I will not correct uh, these annotation, but you can click on validate my review. So that at the end, the system has uh, stored the final uh, annotation that you think are correct for this task. And at the end, what you can do is to execute an algorithm here. It's not exactly an algorithm. It's basically just um, uh, some statistics that you can generate to, to, to have uh, at the end, uh, some uh, statistic in a CSV file. So I will um, do this very quickly, but basically I already did it. So it's here uh, and you have, you can view this uh, CSV file. Of course, you can open it in Excel or anything to uh, have a better visualization of it. And um, what I can quickly do, for example, is also apply a Stardist algorithm um, into one image. So let's say you want to apply Stardist in a specific region of interest. So we, you will first draw this region of interest. You say, okay, it's you associate the term myroy here. You go back to the analysis tab. You say, okay, I want to execute Stardist in the image number one. I want to apply it in the older region of interest that they've been labeled with myroy. And I, what I want to detect is cell. So I want to associate the term cell to all the objects that are detected by Stardist. Here you have default parameters values. I will not modify them, but you execute the algorithm in the background, it will run in, in uh, uh, Docker containers. And uh, oh, it's running here. I already uh, launched a similar job uh, a few hours ago. So we can click here on uh, the results of this detection. And so what you see here are the Stardis detection of cells. Oops, sorry. And something that uh, Gregoire did not show you, but it's, for example, possible, let's say you want to collaborate with your uh, biomedical collaborator and uh, you want to ask him, okay, is this algorithm working well on, my da on the data? You can, uh, for example, easily send uh, an, a comment to this, uh, collaborator directly from the platform and it will send an email uh, and the user will get uh, an email in this in his uh, mailbox maybe after a few seconds it will come yes it's here and so you get an email that's with the comment here and a, a direct link to the to the annotation so if I click here it will go back to the exact position of the annotation that has been detected by this algorithm. So you can interact with your collaborator in, in, in this way. So um, let's go back to the presentation. I think we are almost done here. So 
So I showed you uh, a few examples of this uh, algorithm that are applied on your image data. Next week, we will show you application of other algorithm to let you better understand how to apply them, how to integrate new algorithm here, for example, landmark detection. Here it's another example of uh, uh, segmentation using a, a UNET model to segment head and operculum in zebrafish images. So we have several examples, but the, really the idea is to um, let you understand how to develop this, to integrate your algorithm into the platform so that you can easily uh, let your users, your collaborators apply them and interact with them and review the results on uh, many different types of, of images. Um, just to let you know that these algorithms, so I mentioned some uh, unit models, uh, etc. But with the Cyclamine architecture, it's, it's very flexible so that you can execute algorithms that are in fact implemented in uh, very different languages or libraries. So we will also show you uh, next week together with Sebastian Tozzi how to integ integrate workflows that are coming from the most popular platform like ImageJ, IC, Cell Provider, Elastic, uh, many deep learning libraries, etc., etc. And the idea is to use some container technology so that these algorithms are somehow packed in a, in, a, in a standardized software environment so that you can reproduce the result and trace your result because all these algorithms are, are versioned. So you have direct access also to the source code of, of these algorithms. You have direct access on the platform on the parameters values that were used to run this algorithm, etc., etc. And so we will show you next week, for example, how to detect cells and compare results provided by a cell profiler, uh, elastic, etc., etc. So we are coming to the to the to the end of this uh, first webinar. So we have seen the main concept of uh, Cytomine web user interface. And we, we, we just showed you how to apply algorithm, but, but we will go further into the details next, next week. We will also talk to you about the internal data models of Cytomine, so that if you are a computer scientist or data scientist, you better understand how to manipulate the data. Uh, it's possible to manipulate the data through the REST API, through Python client, Java client, or even JavaScript client, if you want to develop your own web interface on top of uh, the Cytomine core server. We will discuss about interoperability um, and uh, reproducibility. And uh, Sebastian Tozzi will uh, present you Bioflows, which is um, heavily based on Cytomine and provide a new uh, an, um, an adapted user interface with, to, for benchmarking. So it allows you to execute algorithms from very different uh, platforms to compare them quantitatively with, with metrics. And all this, uh, again, through this uh, web interface. Uh, and, and we will show you that already uh, several tens of workflows have been integrated into this platform for very different tasks such as cell detection, cell tracking, etc., etc. So with this, I would like to uh, thank uh, my colleague, of course, and uh, the Nebias Network and the Nebias Academy and all the uh, fundings that we got since 2010. Um, I don't know if there are some live questions to, 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 to answer, but otherwise, I think the idea is that we will continue to answer this question on um, uh, images C forum, etc. But maybe Julien, you can you can tell more about this. Okay, so somehow this uh, this ends the the webinar. Thanks a lot, uh, Raphael and um, and Gregoire. So uh, we can let a few questions arrive live if uh, if you wish, and um, so I can transmit one to you actually that I see now. Uh, it says, thank you for the nice presentation. I wonder whether it is possible to save the annotated delineations as separate files, maybe as binary mask, for example. Thank you in advance. 
Yes, so, so, so it's something we will explain next week, but basically everything is stored in a database in Cytomine. It's um, a special database. Um, but the idea is that everything can also be exported. And so we have some um, API that allows you to export the data into, for, for example, a JSON file. Um, or you can also, we have also uh, API entry point that allows you to extract crops of annotation with binary mask of or alpha mask, etc. So it's it's indeed very very possible to do so. Um, I don't know if I will be able to show this uh, live today. Yes, maybe I can. I will again share my screen. If I succeed to find the yes, okay. So basically, here what I did is to, as I, uh, I use the API. Uh, here you have the Cytomine server slash API slash annotation, and then uh, an identifier. As I as we said previously, each object in Cytomine has a unique identifier, and then you can get a description of this annotation. Here it's a bit messy, but it's basically all the um, uh, coordinates of the contour of this annotation. And then, for example, here you have a crop again um, of this annotation. And you um, can also have the mask, etc. So yes, it's 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 possible to do so. We will spend some time next week to describe this and describe the API and uh, how to manipulate the data. Okay, here's another question. Um, thanks for the great presentation. Is it possible to apply a deep model uh, rather than, for example, cell profiler on histopathology images in real time? So, 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 uh, yes, the, the, it's possible to plug any uh, any models or algorithms into Cytomine. You have to respect some conventions that we will describe next week uh, to describe your um, to describe your algorithm. What are the input values? Uh, what are the required libraries like uh, TensorFlow, or Keras, etc. And then, indeed, you can apply uh, the, the, your workflow on, on your images. Of course, I, when you say in real time, uh, applying a deep model on a, a very large uh, histology image uh, might take some time. Uh, but you can apply this in the background and uh, uh, do other uh, tasks uh, in between. And then you, you, you got the results. Okay, here's another question. So in your API, your output is in JSON string. How many significant figures do you support? I'm not sure exactly what does uh, significant figures means. Um, so, so we have all these kind of uh, annotations and geometries like uh, rectangles, uh, circles, free and polygons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so as soon as it's, it could be converted in uh, WKT uh, format, uh, we, we support this. Um, and we will also show in, in, in using BioFlows that we, we are supporting uh, uh, tracks, uh, etc. and uh, annotation in uh, 3D slice, etc. But I'm not sure I got the, the question uh, right. So there's a precision from the same person. How many decimal points do you support? Uh, I'm not able to directly answer this one uh, right now. So we will double check this. Uh, uh, and let you know. Okay. So maybe if there's no 
final question like for a matter of time then we probably like set an end to the webinar i mean thanks again for the entire team and then uh we hope to see all of